Hello and welcome to the podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by Bird Brains. Bird Brains. No one wants to have a bird brain. Well, now maybe you do. Research on pe- woodpeckers has found a slight restriction of the jugular vein keeps a little more brain in your skull, uh, so your brain doesn't slosh around so much. Without the sloshing, clinical trials has found a significant reduction in the number and severity of concussion-like syndromes. With Bird Brains Helmet, you'll be able to be like a woodpecker out on the field and hit your head against all the hard objects all day, every day. Concussion and mild traumatic brain injuries have been playing a huge role in the news cycle recently. From Will Smith's movie Concussion about Bennett Amalu and his work on chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, to the NFL's announcement that concussions are tied to brain damage, to more recent findings that the NFL has missed hundreds of concussions in their own studies. We've been seeing concussion work everywhere. Concussions are one of the most prevalent injuries, and they do not discriminate by age, sex, occupation, or any other demographic. Today I speak with Alyssa Valentine about her recent concussion research. Alright, well, welcome uh, to Alyssa Valentine joining uh, me today to talk about concussions. Hello. Alright, uh, so I guess the first question I w- would wanted to ask you is what got you interested in uh, the topic? So, I am a two-sport athlete here. I play field hockey, varsity, and I also do cricket. Um, It's a really fun sport. Both of them are really fun. Um, But they're both very risky as far as um, concussion-prone. Field hockey especially, I've suffered, like, two concussions um, from them. One was this past semester, um, beginning of my freshman year. Kind of annoying to, like, walk onto a new team and get knocked out the second week of of their first season. So, um... I don't know, that just basically made me really interested in concussion research because I wanted to understand, like, mostly myself, which is maybe kind of selfish, but I also was like, oh, if I understand myself, I mean, going to help other people too. So that was kind of the inspiration. Yeah, I think that's kind of an inside joke among scientists is that they study uh, the thing that affects them the most. Yeah. (laughs) I also am interested in in concussion and TBI, and I uh, actually ended up having to quit soccer because of uh, concussion uh, that I got sophomore year college so mm-hmm. yeah uh, I think we all kind of are selfish and poorly yeah studied. exactly we uh, kind of hope there's like an underlying like unselfish thing that'll yeah. come out of it but I mean you can't help but get inspired yeah yeah so um, but how about are there any really interesting findings that you've come across uh, early in your research yeah so um originally I didn't really know where to start and my friend sent me this link about um research that people were do- being uh, doing on woodpeckers. So when you think about a woodpecker and like what they do all day, they literally just sit on a tree and they peck at insanely fast speeds and their head, if you like were to think about it, like they're so concussion prone <laughs> based off of like all the serious thudding they're doing into yeah. this tree. <laughs> And so I guess researchers kind of thought about that, and they said, wow, why is this woodpecker not getting a headache? And, like, being like, all right, I'm going to chill out and not peck for, like, a few (laughs) minutes. Like, how is it that they constantly do this, like, all day? So um, they did some research. They studied woodpeckers and their brains, and there are basically, like, two major things that woodpeckers have that we don't. Um, One of them is just their their skulls are so thick, and the way that their beaks are built... um, when the thudding goes on their beaks, um, the pressure is pointed somewhere else, so it really doesn't affect their brain as much. Um, and then the other thing was that um, they have um, um, this thing, they have a jugular vein that um, they restrict when they are um, pecking, and this vein um, restricts blood flow to the brain. So what they'll do is, when they're about to peck on wood, um, their brain sends a signal to increase the blood flow, so that way there's higher Um, blood pressure in their brain and then this kind of like lowers the amount of movement of their brain moving back and forth inside their skull knocking on the skull and causing concussion and headache so uh, researchers noticed this and thought okay well like how can we take these two ideas and actually do something with them like as a human we don't have beaks so that was kind of out of the picture but as far as like strengthening the skull you can wear helmets which Mm -hmm. is obviously like what pretty much a lot of sports are doing now um, they have a lot of new, like, special foams and whatnot that are more absorbent to shock and, like, helmets also that are more conducive to absorbing shock and kind of, like, dispersing it around your head so it's yeah. less, like, direct on one, like, part of your brain. And then um, the major thing is 
Now there's a new neck gear that you can wear that kind of activates the vein that's um, similar to the woodpecker has, and it'll increase the blood pressure in your brain, so that way you can basically simulate the same like blood pressure in your brain that the woodpecker does. So that's a cool overarching thing yeah. <laughs> that can, that's like actually being used for um, yeah for like sports and stuff. Yeah, who would think that woodpeckers would be? Yeah, so instrumental. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And how about, uh, are there any aspects of your topic that you think are confusing or, or need new or developing research? Yeah, so I feel um, there's always that question of, like, how many concussions is, like, when you stop and when you say, okay, like, I'm going to stop playing soccer, I'm going to stop playing hockey, done with lacrosse. Yeah. And a lot of the research I've looked at, it basically kind of says, like, around three or four concussions is when the long-term effects really sustain and like there's no going backwards okay. um when you look at um the effects of one or two mild medium concussions they're seeing that after a few months um someone's able to perform at the same level as everyone else it's just that their brains are functioning using different parts of their brain so it kind of their brain's plasticity makes up for different areas that are damaged and like after a few months you're able to work at the same capacity but um, after three or four concussions, it's kind of harder, and your working memory, more specifically, is a lot slower, and um, and you can't perform as well at like higher levels of working memory tasks. And if the people listening don't know what working memory means, because um, I'm referring to it a lot, it's basically your ability to like multitask is like a good way of mm -hmm. saying it. So like if you were driving somewhere and your friends are talking behind you and you're trying to understand what they're saying. Meanwhile, be able to navigate using your iPhone and drive and make sure you don't kill the person no. who's walking across the street in front of you. It's basically like your ability to um, simultaneously be aware of all things at the same time and do the right thing and act accordingly to all these things. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what my project is on is working memory and concussions. So that's, yeah. Yeah, and you said a couple months to recover from one concussion or, yeah. or what's happening to athletes in that time? Well, they're saying that um, symptoms of like dizziness, nausea, mm -hmm. extreme fatigue, like not being able to look into bright lights, that can go away within like a few weeks after the concussion, depending on how severe it is. But then for as far as like the long-term effects are not as noticeable, like with everyone's like daily behaviors, it depends on how severe, it also depends on how many you've had. So for me, my first concussion, I remember um, immediately afterwards I felt nauseous and everything, but like dizzy and I couldn't look at lights, but that went away after like a week. Okay. And then I remember like focusing and working memory, that was probably a little bit more difficult for me for like the next month. Mm -hmm. But then the second concussion, concussion comes around and like, you know, it like delays and progresses even longer. So it's like as an athlete, um, it's kind of, it's really important to be aware of yourself and where you are at in that process mm -hmm. and to be really honest with yourself because if you um, have a, get um, brain trauma when you're already concussed, yeah. like, like kind of like double it up, that's like the worst thing you could ever do to yourself and that's when like you'll actually have serious brain trauma yeah. that's like really, really bad and that's kind of the issue that you're seeing in the NFL right now where people mm -hmm. aren't being, um, they aren't being told that they have a concussions and no one's like looking at it that way therefore they're repeatedly getting brain trauma and it's getting worse and worse and worse with no like okay let me take a few months to get better right. that's not happening yeah. so that's when people are like dying <laughs> and not getting back and yeah. can't you know play with their kids or read a book you know that's yeah yeah it's interesting to think of how they treat their bodies so much differently than they treat their brains so like at the end of the season they'll take a couple months off for their body to recover mm -hmm. but there's no taking time off to let their brain recover yeah uh, so it's odd to look at that disconnect between yeah um, it's just it's a balance yeah mm -hmm. you need to yeah just be aware of, like your body yeah and how about going forward are there any new areas of research um right now they just continue to grow on what they have right now it seems like the um, woodpecker thing was relatively new, and um, all the research I'm looking at, um, it's kind of focusing down on um, the areas of the brain that are being most affected by um, concussions with working memory, and the one area of the brain they're really talking a lot about is the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, mm -hmm. and I guess that is a really big deal. So like the more research that's being done, uh, mostly through fMRI studies, 
um, they're really just trying to solidify like an area to focus on because mm -hmm. there's like just so much research out there that right. I think they're trying to organize it and really gain like a better focus as to what's the issue and like how what can we do about this because it's such a growing topic right now yeah. there's so much excitement and also interest in it that now there's just a bunch of stuff going on <laughs> and it's all like a big muddy cloud of like information and so I think it's important right now that everyone is like organizes this and figures out a clearer way to like use this information yeah, yeah especially because everyone's different yeah everyone's affected by traumatic brain injury yeah. or concussions differently and mm -hmm. everyone recovers differently so yeah. how do we take basically one unique person and look across hundreds yeah. of unique people and yeah. try to understand something. yeah it's very hard to generalize everything but they're trying mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so do you think there's any one I, I think this topic is so timely and, and very important that there's one uh, thing that you think public should know or understand better that maybe or they don't know um I think the most important thing right now is um, to be honest with yourself when you do suffer a concussion. Um, for me, that's really important. I know people who are suffering and dealing with concussions right now, and it's really important for them to be honest about it too. And I think that some people think, you know, like, oh, if I'm having a headache today, like, it's fine. Mm -hmm. I Personally, I, I, I've had that feeling about it before, and I kind of regret just saying, oh, I'll just deal with it and let it, you know, work itself out, and I'll go on the field and go for that, that two-mile run I need to do today. Um, I think people need to reevaluate what's important, and I think it's really important. Yeah. Yeah. You only get one brain. Exactly. <laughs> Gotta take care of it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now kind of wrapping up here, uh, I know that we talked just before starting here that, yeah, you had something you'd like to promote. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm on a committee at Haverford College um, called ASN, which stands for AIDS Committee Network. Um, and basically, um, oh sorry, AIDS Service Network. And basically what we do is we have a bunch of like promotional things where we try to um, increase awareness on campus of HIV AIDS and also prevention and like how to have safe sex and Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So um, on April 23rd is the tentative date. We are doing a food truck fundraiser, and there'll be a bunch of food trucks on Founders. About around three or four, we're thinking right now, will show up, and 10% um, of their profits will go to um, ASN. And um, so it's a really big deal because it's our big fundraiser for the spring, and there'll be lots of different organizations um, showing up on Founders with like fun activities for people to do while they're waiting in line for the food trucks because we're hoping there will be a big turnout <laughs> and you guys we don't want you to get too bored while you're waiting in line to buy delicious food so yeah everyone should come out mm -hmm. it's the day before the Joe Schwartz run so it'll be a fun weekend oh perfect that's a lot of uh, and the Joe Schwartz run uh, that Alyssa just mentioned is for ALS I believe yeah uh, and uh, Joe Schwartz is an alumni was an alumni of Haverford, uh, mm -hmm. we developed ALS pretty young. Yeah. Uh, if I remember. So, kind of two great uh, yeah. uh, weekend uh, parties to uh, learn some things about. Uh, yes, fun uh, weekend. Health. Yeah. And then the last one, uh, I know it's uh, maybe not a fad, but trying to bring out, make it a fad, uh, something that you'd like to share <laughs> uh, for uh, something that's interesting. Yeah. So, uh, for those of you who know me, um, see me around campus, I'm always sporting the lovely fanny pack. Um, it's just my quirky little thing, so if you see me around campus, I'll probably have my blue fanny pack with a University of Michigan yellow M on it, or a maze, as we call it in Michigan. Um, so yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'll, I keep giggling because um, my friends make fun of me, and everyone does, but I love them because they're so useful, and I think um, it should come back because if you have one, you'll understand how useful it is, and so much more easier than having a purse that's hanging or having to go in your backpack every time you need anything. So if anyone's, you know, curious about trying something new with their wardrobe, I would suggest it. Yeah, so fanny packs, not just for tourists. Mm -mm, no, for everyone. <laughs> well, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's fun. No acting no drama. Struggling with networking, filled with no commas. Zeros for action like an evil. All lies against me. Stuck in this purgatorium, the top is looking empty as I call myself. All signals missing. Thanks again to Alyssa for coming in and sharing her work. Who would have thought that uh, we could find so much uh, about concussions from uh, woodpeckers? Uh, I would have never thought uh, that we could look there, although uh, it seems obvious. Uh, a bird that smacks its head against uh, wood all day, uh, that we should look and see why they are not suffering concussions. Uh, so it's uh, so fascinating that we can pull something from nature and hopefully make a difference in uh, athletes everywhere.
so now turning to the last two segments of the show, Jake's Jams. Uh, this part of the show, I uh, talk about uh, things that I've been interested in lately. Uh, we're in the middle of March Madness uh, as I'm recording this episode, and so something I've been really uh, excited about recently is the ESPN Tournament Challenge app. Uh, it's been really fun to have 10 uh, tournament brackets uh, losing uh, <laughs> pretty consistently uh, across all of them, uh, but it's uh, nice to receive the little updates as uh, games are being played and uh, games are finishing and, and watches. I uh, consistently get picks wrong uh, in the uh, this year's Tournament Challenge. Uh, but it's been something that's been really nice to have around. Uh, and then finally turning to uh, the mailbag, uh, reader mail, uh, you can contact me at EngageBrain on Twitter or uh, email me at mail- my last name at gmail.com uh, with any questions that you have uh, or anything that you'd like me to research or answer, uh, and uh, I'll do so in future episodes. Uh, so uh, that's it for now. Uh, thank you so much, and we'll talk later.